Hey, welcome back, APUSH kids. Welcome to our last lecture in AP US history. Today, we're going to be covering topic 9.6, challenges of the 21st century. Our last learning objective for the semester is learning objective 9F, explain the causes and effects of the domestic and international challenges to the United States has faced in the 21st century. Our first key idea today, key idea number one, says in the wake of attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon in 2001, the United States launched military efforts against terrorism and lengthy, controversial conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq. Now, for the United States, everything seemed to change on September 11, 2001, when an Al-Qaeda terrorist plot led to the hijacking of four airplanes and attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. After 9-11, President Bush declared a war on terrorism. Now, those Al-Qaeda terrorists were mostly located and, and funded and trained out of the country of Afghanistan, where the local well, government called the Taliban had given them safe haven. As a result of this, in 2001, the United States invaded Afghanistan, home of the Taliban, since the Taliban had given refuge to the terrorist group Al-Qaeda to plan and carry out those 9-11 attacks. Now, later on, after a lengthy fight, the United States and Special Forces finally were able to track down and kill the Al-Qaeda leader, Osama bin Laden. However, American forces are still involved in Afghanistan to this day, nearly 18 years after we first landed troops in that country. It makes it today our longest act of military engagement anywhere in the world. It surpassed Vietnam several years ago. But that wasn't our only lengthy engagement um, in a foreign conflict as a result of the War on Terror. It also involved the country of Iraq. Now, the last time we left Iraq, we had ejected Iraqi forces from Kuwait during the Persian Gulf War. And in 2003, we feared that the leader of Iraq, who we had left in power, our guy named Saddam Hussein, was starting to once again build weapons of mass destruction, including potential biological or even nuclear weapons. We further feared that he was going to maybe supply these, uh, these different weapons to terrorist organizations. And so, after he had refused to allow inspections uh, in his country to make sure that he wasn't producing these, we invaded Iraq to remove those weapons, eventually capturing Saddam Hussein himself and executing him for war crimes against his own people, the Kurds in the north, many years earlier. The problem was, no weapons were ever found. Um, the, the, the picture you see on the right is from a PowerPoint that uh, our government used uh, when we presented this to the UN about why we were going in. We, uh, we had suspected that they were uh, using mobile um, uh, mobile production labs. However, these things never turned out to ever have existed. And many people claimed that the war was really fought to gain control of Iraq's oil. Unfortunately, the war severely destabilized the region and would eventually lead to the rise of ISIS in the Middle East. This leads us to key idea number two. The war on terrorism sought to improve security within the United States, but it also raised questions about the protection of civil liberties and human rights. Now, within the United States, we did see some uh, several domestic changes as a result of 9-11, and most of these were designed to try and protect us against a future terrorist attack. So, in an attempt to improve security, the U.S. government created new agencies. The first of these was going to be the Department of Homeland Security. Its stated goal was to prepare for, prevent, and respond to domestic emergencies, particularly terrorism. In addition to this, the United States will also create the Department of, uh, the Department of Transportation Security Administration, otherwise known as the TSA. You know all about them if you've flown any time recently. They're the ones that check your bags, uh, do all types of various screening, and well, make you wait in line for potentially hours. Now, they have the authority of the security of the traveling public within the United States. Finally, the third thing that the United States, the third major domestic change, was the passage of what was called the Patriot Act, which is probably the most controversial. 
Now, it was the first of many changes to surveillance laws, and it made it a lot easier for the government to spy on ordinary Americans. The problem was, though, for many people, is that this loss of privacy eh, um, with these new restrictions. In fact, there's been very few convictions under these different national security laws passed since 9-11. And many people uh, um, will make the Patriot Act akin to some of the other um, restrictions we've had on civil liberties, such as the um, Espionage and Sedition Acts during um, World War I or the Japanese-American internments during World War II or the suspension of habeas corpus during the Civil War. Um, however, many Americans don't notice these because mu much of the stuff is done online and it's not a direct restriction of us. Um, it's much more indirect. However, certainly controversial in our day and age. Leading us to key idea number three. Conflicts in the Middle East and concerns about climate change led to debates over U.S. dependence on fossil fuels and the impact of economic consumption on the environment. Now, both the Gulf Wars, both in 1991 and 2003, had led Americans to question our reliance on Middle Eastern fossil fuels, as well as more past events in the 1970s, such as the oil crisis in 79 and 73, as well as the Suez crisis in the 1950s. In addition to this, uh, Americans also are becoming more concerned about climate change, and we're starting to look more and more so for alternative energy sources. Today, many debate how our economic dependence on oil hurts the environment. And now to key idea and our last key idea, number four. Despite economic and foreign policy challenges, the United States continues as the world leading superpower in the 21st century. Now, as we got into the 21st century, okay, we saw historic change. In 2008, the election of 2008, we saw our first African-American president elected, and that of Barack Obama. And this was an absolutely historic moment. Now, this does not enter an age of, of you know, this does not enter a post-racial age in the United States, um, but it is a huge step forward. For, uh, for us. However, the president faces to this day serious foreign and domestic policy challenges. Uh, for instance, our role in the world and as well as our national debt, which today stands at $23 trillion um, as of when I made this, uh, this video in, in late 2019. Now, by the way, what does a trillion dollars look like? All right, just, just to kind of like picture things. All right, one packet of $100 bills is 10000 bucks. All right, so you can have fun with that for a week, right? A million dollars fits into a grocery bag. It's about that size. This is $100 million on a pallet. Put 10 pallets together, and you got yourself a billion dollars. Here's what a trillion looks like. By the way, notice the guy down there. We have a $23 trillion debt, so you got to make that 23 times bigger. However, despite the large debt that we have and the other problems that the United States is facing in the world to this day, such as what our role should be, uh, whether or not, uh, with climate change, how we should engage the rest of the world, the United States to this day still remains the number one nation on the earth. We have more money, we have more resources than anybody else despite the challenges that we face. And we are, as a country, we are more alike than we are different. And that is an important thing for you to understand in this class. Please understand with this class, as we've tried throughout this entire course, is to teach you not only what happened, but how what happened 100 years ago, 200 years ago, or even 50 years ago, is similar to the challenges that we face today. If we understand our past, we are better able and equipped to understand and hit those challenges of our future. Well, speaking about the future, there isn't a next time, but as always, go Pack.